Oxidol and Ivory Soap present Let's Listen to Spencer. <laughs> Spencer is the friendly chap who happens to be here, there, and everywhere. He's a man who sees what you see, thinks what you think, and laughs when you laugh. <laughs> Oxidol, the soap that gets clothes white without bleaching, and ivory soap, 99 and 44 100 percent pure, it floats, invite you to listen to Spencer. People are always telling you that marriage is a wonderful thing. But as you look around, you see some strange combinations. For example... There's the woman who feels that she could have done better if she'd have married the other fella. <laughs> and never fails to remind her husband about it. <laughs> There's the woman who figures a little bridge now and then is all right. Now and then, it's all right. And then there's always the woman who picks out her husband's clothes. <laughs> Spencer will be back in just a moment. But first, from Oxidol's White Without Bleaching book comes a story about a long white tablecloth. Actually, it was such a long tablecloth that the woman who owned it gave half of it to each of her two daughters when they got married. Well, later, when one daughter visited the home of her sister, she wanted to know how on earth the sister kept her half of the tablecloth so white, even asked her if she bleached it. Well, the sister said no indeed, and told how Oxidol washes white without bleaching. Nowadays, both sisters are depending on Oxidol to get their washings white without bleaching. Oxidol can wash your clothes that way, too, because Oxidol's hustle bubble suds are so active, so lively, they lift dirt out. So why don't you get that famous orange and blue bullseye package of Oxidol? Then every wash day, enjoy a wash that's white without bleaching. And now, let's listen to Spencer. <laughs> Your name is Bertha. Most of the ladies in your club think you're a very nice person. And you are a very nice person. But you have your weaknesses. And the weakest weakness in your life is your husband, Herman. <laughs> now, you and Herman are happily married. Except for one little thing. You won't let Herman live his own life. When Herman wanted to plant the victory garden on the right side of the yard, you insisted on the left. So Herman did it your way. Of course, the fireman didn't punch you in the nose when Herman dug up the water main. <laughs> now, strangely enough, Herman doesn't mind these things. No, that's all right, Bertha. It was fun. I'll just chalk it up to experience. <laughs> he chalks it up to experience. But you, you figure it a little differently. Remember, Herman, the most successful men in history have had a woman behind them. Now, Bertha... <laughs> Bertha, Herman doesn't mind your getting behind them if you'd only stop pushing. <laughs> in fact, he likes being married to you, but for one thing. I sure wish I could pick out my own clothes. This blue pinchback is getting a little shiny. Herman, we've gone through that before. That pin stack is lovely. Besides, blue's your color, and you don't know a thing about style. Well, gosh, I never get a chance to learn. You always pick off my clothes. <laughs> Herman, you know that I know that I know best. <laughs> That's the trouble with our marriage. When it comes to my clothes, you think that you know that I know that... That's the trouble with our marriage. You think... Herman? <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> Guys, look at yourself in this suit. Boy, if this ain't shiny... Yes, Herman? What? I'll have to wear it some more. <laughs> well, I have to admit it is pretty shiny. Then I can get a new one? Saturday, maybe? You know very well I won't be in town Saturday. We'll get it today. Have you forgotten that I'm going to Aunt Mary's place in the country this afternoon and you're going to join me next week? When does the train leave? This afternoon at 4.30. Gee, Bertha, it's not going to be the same here without you. 
Even though it's only a week. That's right, Bertha. That's right. It's not going to be the same without you. Maybe Herman can get out with the boys. Nothing serious, mind you. Little bowling, maybe. Little poker. Little milkshake. Never more than two. <laughs> now, about that suit. You can be sure, Bertha, that Herman's going to put up that old argument. Bertha, how about that suit? Yes, Herman. Brown this time. Now, don't stop that all over again. It'll be blue. But, gee, I've had six blue ones in a row. Come, Herman, we're buying you a blue suit. Very well, Bertha, if you say so. But I'm reluctant. Come on, let's go. You first. No, Herman. You first. That's right, Herman. All successful men have a woman behind them. <laughs> Well, Bertha, you've done it again. Why don't you give him credit for having at least half a mind? Any man can pick out a suit if he's given a chance. You don't even give Herman a choice of colors. Someday, this is going to kick back on you. Even now, the little guy must be planning something. Hey, why can't I get a brown suit instead of a blue one? Maybe I could get a sort of a, a bluish brown. No. No, a brownish blue would be better than that. A brownish blue? You keep thinking like that, Herman, and you won't even be invited to a funeral. <laughs> better still, if, if I get to the salesman first, I can tell him I want a brown suit. Well, Bertha, even the smallest general has some plan of attack, and it's very likely that when you arrive at the department store and meet the salesman in men's furnishings, Herman will probably say... Well, 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 Herman Coots. <laughs> little blue suit today? No, no, not a blue one. Now, listen, here's what I want you to do. Herman, what are you whispering to the salesman about? Oh, gee, I was just asking him. You know very well it's right over there by the stairway. Now, run and get a drink if you're thirsty. <laughs> uh, what would you like to see, Mrs. Coots? A little blue suit? If you don't mind, I'd like to see something in brown. Herman! I don't care. I want a brown suit. <laughs> Having a little trouble with Herman, Mrs. Coots? Yes. We'd like to see a little something in blue, if you don't mind. Certainly. Come, Herman. Now, how would you feel if a salesman said, Come, Bertha? Now, he's being marched around like a little kid. And when you come right down to it, what's wrong with a brown suit? Herman's not going to graduate. <laughs> it seems like a safe bet to buy a brown suit And Herman could be so happy If he could only buy his own clothes But no No, that won't work out Not with you around, Bertha Because... Now what'll it be? Single or double-breasted? I think I like a double... Single-breasted, if you please I agree with you, Mrs. Cooch Herman doesn't seem to be the double-breasted type <laughs> Now, what are you thinking on lapels, Mrs. Cooch? Nuts or peace? I like We'll peace. have the nuts lapels. Oh, nuts. <laughs> I, uh, I suppose you want a plain suit? No. Very plain. No design in it at all. Fine. <laughs> now, let's just slip this 36 on for size. Here we are. How does it feel, Herman? I don't know. It's awfully roomy. <laughs> The vest seems a little large. I'd better pull it down. There. <laughs> What's the matter? Tickles. <laughs> I think that suit will do nicely. Just call the tailor and mark the alteration. I'm sorry. I'll have to take Herman's measurements myself. Our tailor's off today. Uh, Miss Cooch, would you jot down these measurements as I call them? Certainly. Turn around, Herman, and let the salesman measure you. Okay. Now, let's see. We'll measure the little shoulders first. Mm-hmm. Fifteen inches. <laughs> it'll know. Yeah, I lost a lot of weight digging up water mains in my backyard. <laughs> now we'll measure the little arm. Right arm, twenty-six and a quarter inches. Left arm, thirty-two and a half inches. Thirty-two and a half inches? <laughs> That's not smart, Herman. 
he's double jointed. He thinks he's funny. <laughs> Frank with the little arms, eh, Herman? Well, now let's measure a little chair. Take a deep breath, Herman. Herman, the man means breathe. Remember? Okay, like this. Are you inhaling or exhaling? Inhaling. Mm-hmm. Thirty-one inches. <laughs> now exhale. Mm-hmm. Thirty-one inches. <laughs> Guess I'm not much of a breather. Now, let's see. We'll measure the little hips. Put it around here. Mm-hmm. And that beats 44. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Herman? I'm a bookkeeper. I see. <laughs> huh? Now, uh, now we'll get the little legs. Uh, put one end down here, and the other. <laughs> Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine on the pants link. Now for the little cup. Uh, will these be bell bottoms too, Mrs. Cooch? <laughs> oh, now, Bertha. You've got Herman in a blue suit. No pattern. Single-breasted with notch lapels. And now you're going to cap it off with bell bottom trousers. After all, he's got to wear it. He's the one who's going to look funny. It'd be a nice idea if you'd ask Herman what he thinks. Oh, for crying out loud, I have to wear this. You'd at least think somebody would ask me. That's no attitude to take, Herman. It's your suit and you're picking it up tomorrow. It's almost 4.30. Let's go. Yes, dear. Yes, dear, it is almost 4.30, isn't it? My, such enthusiasm for a man who's lost his enthusiasm. Now, what do you suppose he could be thinking? Huh, Bertha? Even now, as you stand on the observation platform, he's all smiles, forgotten all about it. Well, dear, I, I hope you have a nice time. Give my love to Aunt Mary and Uncle Jack, and I'll see you next week. All right. Now, for goodness sake, take care of yourself, and don't forget to put out the garbage. Yes, dear, the garbage. <laughs> Bertha? Yes? You're going to give me the money, aren't you? Oh, I almost forgot. Here it is. There's forty-two fifty for the rent and two and a half for yourself for the week. <laughs> yes, dear. Forty-five dollars. Bye, Bertha. Well, Herman, he's gone. You got forty-five dollars. You want a brown suit? What are you waiting for? Well... He's gone. I got $45. What am I waiting for? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? You can show me a $45 brown suit. Very well. Come this way. Here we are. All brown. How do you like these? Brown's very smart this year. They're very nice, but... I don't want exactly an all brown. Well, just what did you have in mind? Well, I sort of pictured a kind of a, a bluish brown. Yeah, you know? Bluish brown? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, a, a sort of a, well, almost like a, a brownish blue. Well, we don't have brownish blue. <laughs> I'll tell you what you do. Yes? Show me a little blue suit. <laughs> Spencer will be back in just a moment. But first, when you lift a cup of coffee, when you use a compact, when you pat a youngster's cheek, your hands show up. Your hands should have that ivory look, be softer, wonderfully whiter. Well, they can. Simply change to ivory soap for washing dishes. You'll say just 12 days is all it took. Your hands now have that ivory look. In your dishpan, put pure ivory soap. In 12 days, your hands will show a noticeable new whiteness, a new softness. Yes, they'll have that ivory look. Ivory soap is mild and pure. It's doctor's choice for baby's delicate skin. In fact, more doctors advise ivory soap for skin care than all other brands of soap combined. Incidentally, ivory does a whole day's dishes for about a penny. Try it. 
You'll say, just 12 days is all it took. My hands now have that ivory look. Be with us again tomorrow evening at the same time for the invitation, Let's Listen to Spencer, who says, There's always the guy who's your barber. He's a nice fella, means well, but, but he does get in your hair, doesn't he? Good night. Let's Listen to Spencer is heard each night at the same time. Presented by Oxidol, the soap that gets clothes white without bleaching, and Ivory Soap, 99 and 44, 100% pure, it floats. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.